Mm. Now, let us just get the second part of this, because it's very important. And I know many have asked on this, and we might have alluded to it in, in one teaching or another teaching or another lecture. But we want to really fully focus on this, seeing that we saw a video by a Freeman perspective, and it's one that we would advise ones to check out for themselves. And it's called Washing it's called wash, wash Your Brain, and it's talking about the mind control of the New World Order, and, and, and it gives some important information, perhaps you're familiar with it, but it's a good refreshing of certain true points, and even those who are in this kind of a call conference or, or reasoning with Freeman, because it has like various different um, videos and movies and, and other um, word pictures that it uses in the video portion of it, but the audio portion has other voices, other other um, individuals who are working along with Freeman that, unfortunately, we're sorry, we apologize not knowing your names, but I'm sure you regard the fact that one is referring to what the good work that you did in seeking to explain certain things about this whole mind control that is going on now, what's happening in this period of time, and and, and, and ones are not ashamed to testify to, to Christ and to the Bible and to invoke the teachings of Christ, not in an overly religious so-called way, but in a way that, that reflects the eternal truth and also the master, the founder of the firm, as we call him. Now, the second verse, we touched on Ephesians, Ephesians 5 and 26, which speaks about the the washing, you understand, the washing of 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 the word or washing of of the water in the word. In other words, it is a washing in water, you understand, or, or, or by water in the same sense of by the water, by the water of life, which is the life of the Messiah, the indwelling. See, and this is where Ethiopic Christianity or the original Ethiopian church was persecuted over the past 1,260 or so years. And that's a prophetic number. Go look it up and see the reference to it because the evidence is all, is all right there. That it was persecuted because of its Judeo-Christian foundation and because it had the true, it preserved and kept the true doctrine or teaching of Christ, which they call Tawahido, which speaks of the indwelling, the indwelling, the mystical and metaphysical indwelling of Christ in every believer where that relationship between humanity and its divinity is restored in and through Christ, not in and through, uh, through um, Christ, through anyone other, than Christ and spiritually understood. So it's not about like the Pope, like in, in Roman Christianity, you can't get to Christ. They teach you in that, or deceive ones, that you can't get through Christ unless you go through the Pope. Or, because he is, the, he is that intermediary. You understand? But the Bible teaches us that Christ himself in spirit and in truth, he's that intermediary. The Word is that intermediary. So that's, the, that's what we have to touch to touch that face of God, as it were, again, in spirit and in truth, and to have divinity restored to humanity, because there's, a, there's an emphasis in the world today to demonize humanity, you know what I'm saying, to demonize humanity, to turn humanity, have humanity implode on itself. And this is a part of the mystery of iniquity that was, that was um, preached, or, or warned, we were warned of this mystery of iniquity and the rise of this Antichrist last days for it. You see, it's their last days. When we talk about last days for the world, it's their world system. But they're trying to perform a zeitgeist with their zeitgeist, which in spirit and truth is nothing other than poltergeist. So look at our first earlier parts where we touch on that. Now the next part we're going to touch on is Titus 3 and 5. Turn your Bibles to Titus or Tito 3 
and five. And here we go right here. Three and five. The Shema woman says, do, so how do I unlock? And it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, which I and I have done, but according to his mercy, according to his mercy, he saved us. Now, it's hard for some to really accept this, and people get upset, even if they recognize the truth and, and, and they, are, they are in resonance with the truth. They may have a family member or, as we would call it in Rastafari, a fleshy. They have somebody who they're fleshily related to by some direct physical relation who don't get it. What they don't understand is that it's according to the mercy of the Almighty to be able to know the truth and receive the truth, even though it goes against everything that you formerly have be lieved, is a mercy of God. You see, a lot of people think it's just, just reading a bunch of books or it's just in the letter so-called of the law. No, some people have dwelt in it, and, and, and there's some people who know the Bible very well and will tell you that they're atheists. They don't believe a word in it, but they, they know it very well. So it's not just that there is something else going on. You understand that, that they, it's not according to the mercy because they're not saved. You understand? But those of us who are able to receive that salvation must recognize what a precious um, gift. You understand? This is what we, when the Bible says we're saved by grace. This is, it's, a, it's a gift to really be able to see the truth and receive the truth, even though it goes contrary to everything that you have believed or was make-believed. You understand? Made to believe. It says, by the washing of regeneration by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the, and here's what they do this again, man. They do this a lot, and we talked about this, I think, in the earlier video. They put in by, by the regeneration, it says by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's not Holy Ghost. So they, they've been trying ever since to throw little, little monkey wrenches, even right there in the otherwise pretty good here in their translation, King James, you'll see these monkey wrenches they'll throw in, you know, like holy ghosts. And ghosts, we touched on it in the first part, is a disembodied spirit of a dead person. Go look up ghosts in, um, in the Webster's New World College Dictionary. Look at the etymological brackets first for the etymos logos, the true logic, the true word, and then look at the connotation, the together mark, or the mark of the the mark of the beast that they try to put on your mind state to lock you in, excuse me, to this popular but erroneous um, make believe. You know, to 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 believe whatever else believe, and if other people nod their head, you go along with it. I mean, how many times have we heard, you know, and seen this manifest? Now, this second verse right here where it's speaking, let's get the, a context to this. It says, um, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Now, some would say that this is, these are areas of the Bible which basically reinforce like the Greco-Roman and the domination of men and people and, and, and the um, worldly rulers. And no doubt, in ignorance, they, they do use a lot of these verses to basically tell people just to shut up and go along with the system. But the key word about that is in every good work, ready to every good work. So it's not just obeying the, the principality, the magistrates, but it's looking at, well, what is the end of that? So, so we do not, we're not subject to them just because they are these so-called man-made earthly temporal rulers if they're not doing good works, and good works according to the standard, you understand, the ma'at, of the true anointed or the true Christ. It says to speak evil of no man, be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness to all men. So, so these are just, these are just um, characteristics you know, of, of a, true, a, a true newborn in that sense, a true Christian. Another way we can know them it says, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. In other words, many of us who have grown over, over 
whatever the time has been, years, months, days, minutes, moments, however long, because there's no time and space for God. There's no time and space for the truth. What, what, what kind of keeps people, keeps the truth away or, or keeps them from accepting it many times is what's already in themselves, that they're not ready to recognize, face, confront, and, and cast out through the powers of, 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 of affirmation of the truth and denial of, of, of the error. But we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful, and hating one another. Mm. It's interesting that Hawaii Apollos would say right there that we know what it's like to be on the wrong side of the track. But now he's come back to those who are still on the wrong side of the track to instruct them. And many of those who he used to be down with hate him and want to kill him because he's not going along with the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age that he was in. But he, he is confronting the poltergeist. You understand? He's confronting the, 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 the world and, and the worldliness that of his age and, and, the, and the spiritual um, wickedness, as he points out elsewhere in, in Ephesians, by having the full armor. Here it says, but after that, the, after that, the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. And he appeared to us not by works of righteousness, which we have done. He didn't appear to us. The revelation of Rastafari is not because anything that we as black people had done, no work of righteousness. He did not appear at that time in 1930 upon the throne of David because of something that we had done. But according to his mercy did the black salvation, the black redemption begin for us and, and, and by, by relationship for the world. In other words, if black people, in other words, go down, the whole world go down. And see, a lot of folks don't want to put those two, those two together because they still have the, the racist or the demonic embedding from the beginning, which he shewed on us abundantly through Jesus Christus, our Savior. Being, that being justified by his grace, we should be made ears. Ears, that means inheritors. So our divine heritage, there's an inheritance in and through our divine heritage. Ears, it says, according to the hope or expectation of eternal life. A symbol of that, as we know, in ancient Egypt was the Ankh. The Ankh was a symbol of, of eternal life. And the truth is the truth is the truth no matter what age it's in. We can't look at ancient Egypt to be all so-called bad because they had Ankh and in one period of time the, the interpretation was this or the, like the cross. Look at today. We have a lot of people who say they're Christians, but when we check them out, based on the, the manual and the teaching of the master, we see they are antichrist. You, you, you see, and people who may seem like antichrist because of your, your programming, when you get into the truth, you find that they are of the true Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like the Rastafari had been demonized, black heart dread, so forth and so on, and they, and they burned that ganja and all that. And then when you, if, you, if you're able to receive the truth, you'll recognize they, they have been right, they have been right, they have been right. You know what I'm saying? The reason why people didn't accept them is because he, they were not white, and they, cannot, they have not got into the level of maturity. They have not accepted the invitation to be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of their mind. They still are going in that old mind. So this is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. These are faithful sayings, and these are things that we have to affirm. Affirm in the spirit of our heart and our mind constantly. That they which have believed, and we upgrade that word to the ma men or to, to admit as true in God, in the truth, might be careful, might be careful to maintain good works, to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable and profitable to men and profitable to humanity. So we, we briefly have touched on spiritual baptism, spiritual baptism. There's more that needs to be said. 
there's more that needs to be said and and taught on this. But first, to to to, to build on the foundation, let us understand this: that baptism, to review, baptism means to immerse. You understand? And that washing. That washing now of the water, as one would wash if they are cleanse, cleanse, cleansing this mind, you understand, they will seek to wash their body. If they go work out and get dirty and sweaty and they have opportunity to wash, they'll wash. The same thing with now understand how we need to do this for our mind. So Torah, Torah studies. You understand, and the Torah portion readings and, and remembering the Sabbath and setting it aside. You understand, uh, individually, if that's all that, that, that is on the same righteous spiritual frequency, if you, if you gather by yourself, you understand, and, and like they say, go in your closet or, or go in your private space and, and turn off the cell phone, so forth and so on, and study, the, uh, until you can try those and prove those who are spiritually inclined, as this was says, try every spirit, you understand, to see whether they are of God or not. But that means that you and I, and I and I must also know, first of all, what is the standards of God. This is why it says study and show yourself approved. So you'll be able to rightly try every spirit, not by your own self-righteousness, but by his righteousness. So you have to know what his righteousness is. So spiritual baptism is one of the key areas. But the first area is to, they say, believe in, in, in Angolas and in English. But we recognize from looking at the manuscripts that that word belief would more correctly be admit as true. You understand? To, be at, to admit as true, to have so-called confidence or trust in. So those who admit as true in the true Messiah or Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, are to baptize, not just by the outward act, that, you know, like when people will go down to the riverside, that is the outward symbolic act. But Christ shows us by studying the example of Yeshua that he did not baptize with water, as it says, but with spirit and with fire. You understand, with spirit and with fire. We know that the word is not just the letter of the word, you understand, but it's the spirit of the word. That means the true abstract metaphysical intent of the word. So at this particular point, we're going to pause once again for the cause, and we hope that and we pray that, that this brief teaching and reasoning on spiritual baptism, pointing out, the need and necessity for us to wash our mind, to cleanse our mind state, because the world that we call the world that we live in has polluted our mind state from birth. You understand? From birth. It's like the old thing when a baby gets to recognize what a dollar bill is. You know how happy some parents have felt when their baby can now see the dollar is worth something and hold on to it? and they'll let the baby put the money in their mouth and how filthy that dollar is, it begins from such a state. You understand? Because we're born in a certain world, and those around us, are, especially our parents or, or whoever's our guardians, they provide that, that formative basis for us. But what Satan, our adversary and enemy, has sought to do, and somewhat successfully, is to create a generation gap, you understand, between parents and the children, between so-called modern people and the past, between young and old. No, it's that old technique that the Romans called divide et impera, you understand, or to divide and conquer, you understand, to divide and conquer. So we, we must be wise to salvation, you understand. We cannot be ignorant to salvation. We must be... Um, Children in wrath, but not children in knowledge. This means that we must grow up to him in all things. And we begin with washing our mind state, washing our minds, cleansing our minds, recognizing the thoughts and feelings and, 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 and what's going on in this internal world. They want to keep you outwardly focused. 
and say if you get a new material thing, your inner soul is going to feel so much better. You understand? That right there is the height of what the Bible refers to as idolatry. You understand? Idolatry. But just think about it. We live in a world now that's such a, at such a heightened level of idolatry, and so many of us have been infected that there's much work to do. And seeing how rapidly this new age is coming in, you understand, there doesn't seem like much time to do it, you understand, and much time within the limited sense of the old world ending and the new world beginning. But most of the folks now buying into the mystery of iniquity and they're allowing the so-called old world rulers through iniquity, as it says, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full, to exercise some authority because ones believe in them and they believe in their system, which at the heart of it is sorcery and witchcraft, and they say black magic, so forth and so on. But but be that as it may, it's it's evil. You understand? It's evil. Um, like I said, there's more there's more to to share on this, but we hope and pray that this has been helpful. So, Shalom Ras Teferi Ine, I Ras Yadinos Teferi Ine. I'm Wendem Yadin or Ras Iadonis Tefar, the Line of Jesus Society of His Imperial Majesty. So, my brothers and sisters, pray for I and I, as I and I pray for the I, and may we come out of this, and may we all be one in spirit and in truth of the King of Kings, Katamawi Haile Selassie, and his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos. Amen and amen. More to come. Y'all willing. Stay tuned. Shalom.